The time is now. Do you want to give them more when the time is now? You've seen the rest now. You want the best when the time is now. The time is now. The invitations have been sent out for a great day of Cross Leagues Road softball here on the campus of Marion University. We're all just hoping that Mother Nation doesn't crash the party like she did earlier this morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Alongside my broadcast partner and good friend Jim Leisure, I'm John Cupo, and we're set to give you two here on the ISC Sports Network as the number seven ranked Knights of Marion play host to the Cougars of Mount Vernon Nazarene. Let's get right to it and bring them a broadcast partner, Jim Leisure. And Jim, of all the sports, records and a ranking in softball can be the most deceiving. We got a sport here where you can fail 70% of the time and still have a great career. So even with the Knights at 22 and four and that top 10 ranking, a 500 Mount Vernon club can come in here and shake up those rankings heading into Monday. Yeah, it looks like obviously, John, that, that Marion's dialed in. They, they kind of are where they want to be at this point in the season. Mount Vernon still kind of searching for some offense. They seem to be a station to station group, not a lot of power. You're going to see probably some small ball here, singles. You know, like you said, uh, get them on, get them over, get them in. And uh, Marion, I think, is going to try to drive the ball a little bit better. Wind blowing out, so it should be a lot of fun. Olivia Stunkel on the hill for the Knights. Unblemished record this year, 12 0. Zary Hill, the sophomore, leads off. And she slaps one. That's going to be fouled on the left field line. Really good movement on that pitch, John. Again, just a really kind of nasty inside out. It was thrown on the outer corner and then broke off the plate. And Hill was able to just get, you know, the bat on it and, and kind of not necessarily stay alive because she doesn't have two strikes, but uh, at least be a pest to the pitcher, which is kind of what you want your leadoff person to do. Swing through that one. So one and two. Stunkel ahead here early. Same pitch, different location. That one was uh, center cut and then broke to the outside half. This one popped up into the hands of Hoffman. That'll be one down. Now, I did like what Hill did there. She really shortened up and just tried to put the ball in play. Obviously, that she did not get what she wanted. She wasn't trying to pop it up uh, you know, harmlessly to the left fielder but I did like the way she shortened it up with two strikes and just put it in play, put some pressure on the defense. And Holcomb got it past. Green on the bunt to the left side, and she'll get on. Well, nice job of just rolling it out there. She couldn't have rolled it to a better spot. You see on the replay there, just out of the reach of the third baseman, Haley Green, and uh, shortstop uh, Harwiger had no play there. Very wisely, just eat it. Don't throw it around. I mean, you throw it around, there's a good chance somebody could miss it, and you end up on second base instead of first. Here's a junior, Molly Pence. There's a strike down the pipe. Stunkel doing a good job of just getting after it, man. She's not, uh, it's only, I think, thrown one pitch out of the zone. That one fouled back straight towards us. That's just nasty. Again, that's a really difficult pitch. You know, she's a right-handed pitcher, but she's got that, that break that breaks away from the left-handed hitter. And uh, honestly, you know, you almost need a tennis racket, you know, to hit it because, again, the, 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 the barrel of the bat's only so wide. Pence down 0-2. And she just floated that one in there. Pence had no chance, and he's locked up. Stunkel gets the K. I believe that's her 61st strikeout on the season. You're going to see on the replay here, really nice job, as you said, changes pace and just, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where before it was, before you realize what's happening to you, they've already got your wallet. Go sit down. There's Avery Miller and a strike. So Stunkel keeping it in the zone so far in these first four hitters. Well, when you're 12-0 and 0 and, you know, you probably don't fear too many hitters, you're just going to go right after them. Here it is, hit it. Miller swings through that one. Down 0-2 quick. Two pitches, two strikes. 
be interesting to see what she does here. Could be another change up again. You're, you know, this is where the hitter has to think location. You know, she's going to start throw something in the zone, break out of the zone. That one fouled out to the right side of the park. A little souvenir for some lucky fan there. So Miller gets another shot. 319 on the season as a young sophomore. Beautiful day, though, John. Again, wind blowing slightly out. As, or it was when I pulled in. That one just fouled the third base line. Great. Is that the drone shot there? We do have a drone working with us today, so we're going to get some fantastic angles. The 0-2. And that one to the right side. Sierra Norman does a nice job hustling over that ball. It's clearly foul, but, you know, I still like it. You know, go play. Play until somebody yells foul. So Miller doing a good job here, staying alive. Fouls that one back. Yeah, you got to like the at bat. I mean, she's she's battling here now. Pitch count not quite as important in softball as it is in baseball, but this will be the sixth pitch of this at bat. She's fouled off and spoiled four really good pitches. Holcomb remains on first. And did she go? Yes, she did. So on the second K of the inning for Stunkel, gets them out of the inning. And we'll go to the break. One, two, three, coming up for the Knights. You're watching it on the ISC Sports Network. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100-mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. Marion gonna start things off here in the bottom of the first. And Jim, you got about 400 worth of average coming up in these first three batters. Absolutely phenomenal. Harweger, Knox, and Madeer to start off for the Knights. Well, you know, again, it's uh, no surprise, Coach Fleming, uh, the record that they have is because, honestly, they just destroy the, the ball. And like you said, uh, Harwager, Harwager is 500, uh, Knox behind her, 353, uh, Madeer at 350 or 434. Uh, team batting average total is 365, but the ladies playing today, team batting average 377. Savannah Harwager, the senior. her ball at Trinity Lutheran for the Cougars. There's a ball down low, the 1-0. I really like the way that Coach Fleming has, has built his lineup. He basically has two lineups. He you know, has one hole, two hole, you know, three hole, four hole, and then they go back to almost a leadoff hitter in the five hole, and they start all over again. That ball low. So 2-0, and something you don't want to do is put Harweger on the pad. She's got 18 stolen bases. Yeah, 18 for 18. So uh, unlike uh, Mount Vernon, Marion does like to, to move and they like to steal. And they're going to put pressure on the, the pitcher-catcher combo. There's a strike from the starter. Sheridan Sullivan. It's her 11th appearance. Seventh start. Are we your thought about it, but pulled it back. And now 3-1. So Sullivan has to make a decision here. Yeah, you know, you don't want to necessarily give in to her, but, you know, you still got to find a, at least a corner of the plate. And there's a shot, and right at Holcomb and right. So Harwiger put a stinger on it, but that's just a hard out. Yeah, really nice job here. You're going to see the replay here. 
and uh, perfectly positioned. She had to move a couple steps to her left. But uh, that ball, like you said, was absolutely tattooed. Unfortunately, it was hit right at somebody. That brings up Brooke Knox, a junior, and she fouls it back. Now, you know, one of the things, and, I, and I'm sure that, you know, a player like Savannah Harwager is going to go back to the bench. She knows she's seeing the ball, and I'm hitting it. You know, it, it really stinks to just crush the ball like that and hit it right at somebody, but you just got to convince yourself, you know what, I'm seeing it. I'll get back up again, and I'll hit it somewhere else. Knox pops it up, and Hancock will put that one away for two down. So two quick outs for Sullivan. Yeah, she fell behind the, the leadoff hitter, you know, 3-1, and, you know, was starting to look like maybe she was going to struggle to find the plate, but she's got the last, uh, the last two there. But good communication on the infield. Shortstop overrules basically everybody in the infield, but certainly the third baseman. And Abby Madeer pops this up. Mayor under it and bobbles it a little bit, but one, two, three for the inning on defense for the Cougars. So they'll take the plate, and the top of the second will come back on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense, and investing in you makes good sense to us. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Good inning for the Cougars on defense to hold that top of the lineup for the Marion Knights, which has been very dominant all season long. Quick one, two, three. And Mackenzie Hancock will lead things off on the offensive side. Hancock comes into the ball game at 373. She does have one homer. And if anybody is a stolen base threat, it's her. She has five. That ball low. Stunkle falls behind 2-0. Good spot to miss, though. I like the pitch location. Just uh, bring it up just a little bit. That ball fat out to the right side. You know, a lot of times, John, just that, that location is just a little bit of, of the release point. You know, you released it here, and it was low, so you're going to hold on to it just a millisecond longer, maybe get a little more spin with the finger and her fingers on the ball, and then get it to stay up. That ball fouled to the right side, and no one will get there. So even things up at 2-2. Two and two. Here on the campus of Marion, just what turned out to be an absolutely beautiful Saturday. I'm sure everybody in uh, central Indiana probably jumped about six feet off of the bed with a couple of those strikes earlier this morning when Mother Nature imposed her will across the area. There's a shot, and is that going to find a gap? It will. To the wall, Hancock going to make her way to second, and she'll get there standing up. Well, the Cougars off to a good start here in the second inning. The uh, lead leadoff stand-up double by Kenzie Hancock, and actually she has five double, uh, doubles this year to make that six. It's a good shot of it there, and again, just no chance for the outfielder, Jenna Menix, in center field. That ball was just perfectly placed. I really didn't think it was hit that hard. I thought it was going to hang up a little bit, but I think with the wind, it just took off. Brings up Kylie Rohr with an opportunity. That's a strike. So Stunkel says, you don't want enough of this. I'm going right to the strike zone. Rohr, the sophomore, batting an even 300 on the season, has driven in seven. And she laid, tried to lay one down, fouls it straight back. We'll try it again. Yeah, that, that pitch in on your hands is a difficult one to get down. Roar 
We're down 0-2. McKenzie or Hancock on second. And just a bit outside. One and two. Grace Meyer there behind the plate. Does a decent job of framing it up for the home plate umpire. Just pitch honestly was just too far out. There's only so much you can do as a framer. And Roar swings through that. And that's Stunkel's third K. So a good recovery after the leadoff double from Hancock. Gets Roar swinging through it. One down. Well, Stunkel came into the ball game 65.2 innings pitch with 62, I mean, 60 strikeouts coming in. So she averages about one, a, one an inning. Brings up Kira Mayer. Solid 323 average, a sophomore. And she is the one deep threat. She has five home runs for Mount Vernon this year. That ball inside. Good eye there. One and one to the sophomore from Mount Vernon, Ohio. She went to Watkins Memorial, a member of the Warriors softball team. And that's hit them. Hoffman, she'll fire over to first and got it. Hancock will stay pat at second, so good defense there. Harweger to Norman. Well, nice job there. Again, you see the, uh, the replay. Just very quickly check the runner. The runner wise enough to not get off too far. She got to get it across and quickly, and she did. 60-foot base, base pass. You don't, you don't have a lot of time. That brings up Sydney Hoover. Junior, just a skosh under 300, 289 on the season. Even at one and one. You know, obviously took something off that one there and just didn't quite reach the plate, but that was the goal. You know, that's the changeup. You want it to look like the fastball. It's on a, it's on a plane that looks like it's going to stay in the zone, and then it just drops off the table. Swings through that one. Now Hoover in a hole down one, two. So, again, doing a nice job. You know, hitting is all timing, and so pitching is disrupting that timing, John, and she's done a great job. She came with the changeup, then she came with the gas. And right now Hoover's not sure what she's going to come with. And that's going to fall into no man's land on the third base line, so we'll reset and do it again. Again, a good catcher, and I'm sure Grace Meyer has this ability, is going to look at the feet of the hitter, see where they're lining up. I mean, are they at the back of the box or in the middle of the box? In this case, she's in the middle. So now you have basically everything at, uh, at your disposal. But if she moves up in the box, come with the gas. And after a, a long second, Jim, you and I kind of looked at each other there waiting for it, but Hoover goes down looking. So after the leadoff double, Stunkel does the work, gets him out of trouble. We'll go to the bottom of the second here on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Heading into the bottom of the second. There's been two hits in this one so far, both by the Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars. One in each inning for them, but no damage done, and that'll bring up. Four, five, six for the Marion Knights. Start off by Sierra Norman, the senior. You know, looking at the statistics, John, for Mount Vernon, that's kind of what they are. They, they do hit the ball, and they do get on base. They don't have a lot of power, and they, they you know, so they're going to get, you know, a bag or two, and then they're just going to have to try to get them around. There's a strike. But they're going to have to do it the, the hard way and the old-fashioned way. They're going to have to string together two or three hits in order to, to play to run. That ball high and outside. Yeah, that was one of those here. I'm going to throw this in the ocean, see if you can hit it. <laughs> one and one. That 
ball inside. So now Norman ahead in the count, two and one. Norman at 364. And now 3-1, so she can sit on something here. Yeah, yeah, 3-1 to me is like the same as 2-0. Oh. You're going to hit your favorite pitch. You're looking for the spot where you like to drive the ball, and if it isn't there, don't swing. If the umpire calls it a strike, it's, it's a strike. And that caught the inside corner, so we're full here at 3-2. And that's the thing. That pitch was on the inner half. It was a strike, good pitch, but that's not what she likes, and she knows that if she's going to swing and, and swing at that, she's going to pop it up. So she's going to wait on one and hope to, to, the pitcher makes a mistake. And got her looking. Great pitch from Sullivan on the inside corner. There's really nothing Norman could do with that. Yeah, you know, all you can do is just you're going to have to offer at it, though. If you're looking at the replay here, it's too close to take. Uh, you you got to at least get a bat on that thing and foul it off and try to spoil the pitch. You hate to see. And, and the, the umpire did not take the bat out of her hands, but... You hate to put it in the umpire's hands. That brings up the freshman, Abby Hoffman. Having a fantastic season, her first season here at Marion, batting 390. Sullivan working both sides of the plate there. Last two pitches were on the inside corner. That one was on the outside. And that's going to find the glove of Hancock. So an easy put out. And that'll bring up Lily Wendt. Wendt is a player that has a little bit of alley power here. She's got five doubles on the season. Has an opportunity down the uh, left field line. She can get it over the third baseman's head. Wendt the sophomore, very familiar with these parts. Played her softball at Bishop Chittard for the Trojans just down the road here. One of the many schools that I coached at, I was the black widow of coaches. If I was on your staff, you might want to keep your stuff in a box. We're all getting fired. <laughs> Always the antagonist, Mr. <laughs> Leisure. <laughs> I don't know. About every seven or eight years, I just felt the need to move on. I was like Ricky Bobby's daddy, you know? And when things got too good, it was just time to leave. I had to blow it up. I had to get thrown out of an Applebee's. That's the excuse for <laughs> your Reese Bobby. Yeah. Out of all the analogies <laughs> we went with today. That ball inside. That was not on my bingo card for this. Yeah. Almost final day of March. Got one more to go. And then we're into April on Monday. You know, whatever bone in your body that, you know, makes things right and normal, I guess I just don't have it. And that's right in the path. Hill under it and puts it away. So Sullivan doing a great job getting through the Mita lineup for the Knights. We'll go to the top of the third on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. The dog days of summer are coming up on us, and that young gentleman right there is getting ready for us. Beautiful pup, but these folks yeah. came out to a beautiful Saturday here on the campus of Marion University. We've got zeros on the board so far, and both. Right now, it's just pitching performances. Olivia Stunkel doing what she's done best all year, Jim, and Sheridan Sullivan setting down the Knights so far in order. Yeah, both pitchers have been impressive, but right now it does appear as if Sullivan has been a little bit more impressive, and she's got six up and six down. Here's Laney Sparks. There's a strike. 
Stunkel continues to get ahead of the hitters. You know, it's hard to hit when you're 0-2 and, you know, 1-2, and you want to try to get into a hitter's count. Unfortunately, so far, the Cougars have not been able to really do that. that she got a piece of that one and unless either she swung or she got a piece of it but it is a I, strike I so there was a little bit of a little bit of contact there down 0-2 and she'll go back to the bench just nasty gotta love it she's doing a real good job of, of again changing speeds and changing locations she came into this one with 60 K's up to 65 already So Zary Hill now back to the top of the lineup. Over to Harweger. She'll set, fire to first. One pitch, one out. So two down, I'll bring up Mallory Holcomb. Started things off for the Cougars in the first. She got one by Green at third. And this one. Are we have to charge, fires over, and Norman couldn't handle it. It'd be tough to see what they score this here. This ball just dies in the dirt right here. She's expecting it to come up. It really doesn't, and then she throws it away. I, you know, I'm, you know, again, I didn't see what the official score was, but I could easily be a, an E6. We'll wait to see what they give her there, but Holcomb on base for the second time. And as they decide that, this one into the glove of Hardweger. That'll set the inning over. And after the base runner, we'll go to the bottom of the third on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. To the bottom of the third we go. The Knights gotta get some offense generated here. I've gone down in order so far and a great pitching performance from Sheridan Sullivan. Grace Meyer, we'll see if she can get the night's going. Fouls that one back. Jim, you got to appreciate when you get the seven hole and your catcher's batting 426. Yeah, it's very impressive. Most uh, places, if you're batting 426, not only are you higher in the order, but there's probably a statue of you somewhere on campus. And is that going to find a hold? It will. So Grace Meyer gets the first hit for the night. She'll find her way to first. And the offensive drought, so to speak, for the first two innings has been broke here in the bottom of the third. And Haley Green now gets a chance. See if she can advance Meyer over at first. Junior swings through that one. Tough spot and tough tough spot to swing and just a smidge late. So Coach Fleming goes through the uh, signals here. We'll see if he's got somebody in motion. Ball inside. Lots of commotion on the by the first base side, but nothing doing. Even things up at one. Grace Meyer one of two on stolen base attempts, so probably not going anywhere. That ball down. Green in a good spot here. Two one the count. And that ball inside. Now Sullivan's got something to think about here. Yeah, and Coach definitely wanted the batter's attention that time, so he asked her to step out, take the signals. But again, you're looking for a pitch to drive here. If you get it, put a bat on it. 
And that ball inside. Green draws a walk. Two up, two on for the Knights. First scoring threat here for the blue and gold. Now to bring up Jenna Minix. Well, you know, first and second on and nine hole up, I mean, about 85% of the time that means a sacrifice bunt, get them into scoring position. The former Plainfield Quaker, about 20 minutes west here of Indianapolis. She puts that down and ends up just foul. We'll again, try it again. Not a huge surprise there again, the nine hole, first and second, nobody out. Now here's the deal, if you're the Cougars of uh, Mount Vernon, you're going to have to set your defense, and they've already communicated. I'm sure the catcher has given the signals of whether they're going to you know, roll the infield toward first, roll it toward third. Normally, you keep the third baseman home in this situation. Tries it again, and goes to left side foul. And they had both corners coming, so again, what they're doing is saying, look, you want to give us an out? We'll take it. We'll just pick it up and throw you out at second or at first base, and we'll play uh, second, third, one out. Now Minix down 0-2. Meyer and Green, and she swings through it, and Sullivan gets a big out. But now you have to go up against Harweger. Well, and second time through. So now everybody on the lineup has seen the pitcher. I'm sure they've all gone back to the dugout and communicated, hey, what'd she throw you? What was the count? You know, what did she come with? Well, now they got a little better idea how to attack. Our Uyghur fouls that foul off the Marion dugout. Kind of an inside out swing there. Kind of let me believe she might be trying to go to left field. Left fielder in just a little bit. Of course, that's not unusual too. Again, you got a left handed here. She's probably or not going to go to over your head with power. And inside, and that got her. So that's Sullivan's second hit pitcher, hit by pitch this season. That caught her right on the elbow. Well, get on any way you can. And again, you see the replay there. So that gives a chance to Brooke Knox to drive in at least one here. She's got 15 RBI in the season. Well, I started to say the outfield was playing in a little bit, but <laughs> right as I said that, they backed up. And there's a shot. Will it find a gap? It does. It's at least going to score one. And everybody's safe. Meyer was able to score easily. Green had to hold up. Yep. Simple as that, John. She just couldn't afford to take off. And what she needs to do, and we'll see maybe on the replay, is she needs to turn around and look at the out, tur turn the whole body around, and be, be taking little hop steps each time. Because if the center fielder was going to get it, she was going to have to dive to get it. So you got time to get back. So heady awareness on the base pads for the Knights. They remain loaded. Now we may be playing carousel ba softball here. There's a strike. So Madeer down 0-2. Uh, you just need to choke up, widen out, and just throw the bat head at it. That ball fouled back. You can still hit with power. There's a lot of guys and gals you know, in, in the big leagues or, or you know, at the major college level in softball that can, they don't stride. They just, they're, they're going ahead and, and, and get their feet set as if they've already strided into the ball and they're just going to throw their hands. And she swings through that one, so a real big out. That'll bring up Sierra Norman. He's driven in 30 so far in this season, and there's still a few out there to be had. Knights have one already. But if Sullivan can get out of this with only one, she's done a heck of a job. Without question, and you know, you're doing it through the heart of the order too, so very impressive. But again, you get the, the, the feeling that this is a big at bat here. This could go a long way in determining the game. That ball low. I mean, if she were to drive one off the fence, it's gonna score at least at least two, probably three, because there's two outs. Should be moving on contact. And if Sullivan can get her, that's even bigger. That ball inside. 
Man, oh man. 2-0 on the four hole. He's already hit four homers. That's 30 RBIs on this relatively young season. And that ball outside. Now Sullivan is in a hole. A good take. You know, again, it was not her pitch. Now it'll be interesting to see. I would imagine Coach Fleming's probably Green got her light. taken all the way now. I think he's the way he looked away, that's kind of the universal coaching sign of if I'm not looking at you, why are you swinging? She waved the bat, thought she was going to first, but she won't. So we'll do it again at three and one. Well, three ones to me, the same as, as two up. You're still looking for your favorite pitch. And that ball up, and that's a freebie. So Meyer crosses a plate for the night's second run. Everybody will advance one base. And now the Nups, the Knights up two nothing. You know what I say? Pretty much every broadcast, John. You know whether it's baseball or softball, if you can get some production out of seven, eight, and nine, you're probably going to win. And right now the Knights scored two runs in their seven and eight hole. Hoffman straight away to center, the put out, but the Knights get two on a few key hits and a walk, and they lead 2-0. We'll go to the top of the fourth on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. So the offense kind of came alive there for the Knights in the bottom of the third. They get two, and that puts the lead at two. Two nothing here at the top of the fourth on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon as the Cougars from Mount Vernon Nazarene begin their top half of the fourth. It's Miller, Hancock, and Rohr. And there's a strike from Stunkles. She's been doing what she needs to do so far. Has only given up the two hits. All casually fouled back. So you got her 0-2, so if, you know, if you're a pitcher, this is where you gotta have, gotta have a little fun here. I mean, you can throw just about anything you want. You certainly don't want a mistake and, and leave it over the plate, but right now uh, you're in total control. Just a bit outside, so we'll do it again at one and two. Nice pitch, though. It was close enough that some hitters would have offered and then probably grounded out weakly to uh, either the shortstop or the second baseman. And there's a shot. Stunkel hung one just a little bit. And Miller just kind of rocket shot between third and the hole. Well, she's, you know, Stunkel's had a lot of uh, mileage out of that changeup. Well, that one there, she was kind of waiting on it. Really nice at bat. I mean, when you get down 0-2 and then can finish with a base hit, that's a pretty good at, pretty good at bat. That brings up Mackenzie Hancock. She led the second off with a double into the gap. But never advanced past second as Stunkel was able to get out of it. Checks the wristband there. She was looking into the first base dugout. Looking for a signal here. And the bunk goes down. Stunkel fires the first for the one out. So the fielder's choice. Miller will move over to second. Yeah, to me, an interesting decision there. You know, you're going to bunt, uh, you know, what, your five hole, who's batting 373 with already a double today. 
You're already you're down two. I mean, this is only one run out there. I don't think one run's going to necessarily win this game. Kylie Rohr for the second time. I think I would have let my uh, 373 one home run and six doubles hit her swing the bat there. Rohr struck out in her first at bat. And she reached for that one and fouled it. Out to the right side, down 0-2. Second different pitcher warming up down the right field line for uh, Mount Vernon. Number 10, Bailey Sheets. Sheets is his second. They had number 12 up earlier. That ball fouled back. We'll do it again at 0-2. Going right in our way. Is that a play? It is, and good play by Norman. It was running out of real estate, but that ball stayed in play for the second out. Yeah, she does a really nice job of finding the fence, basically, finding the dugout. She took a quick look. Again, a lot of times you're coached to have the kid, even with the glove hand, reach out. So that way, you know, if you do connect to the fence or the dugout, you at least know where it is. But she knew where she was and made a nice play. Here's Mayor Lazy pop up, and oh, no. Green came in the whole time. She called off Stunkel. And that ball just couldn't find all the leather. Well, and again, by by virtue of, it, of the, the priority on the fly ball of the infield, when a third baseman calls it or shortstop calls it, pitcher needs to get out of the way, so she did. Now, honestly, it would have been probably an easier play for the pitcher. Now, there are some coaches who say, I don't ever want my pitcher to have to field one of those. She's working hard enough. You, but that's one where, you know, again, that was one of those tweeners where it probably would have been best if you had just let her catch it. Brings up Sydney Hoover. That ball came right back at us. Down 0 1. Now runners at the corners. Two down. Cougars down two. Here in the top of the fourth. Good pitch. Hoover just kind of laid the bat out there on that one. Well, it was off speed. She got fooled. So, you know, you, you start to move the lower half first, and you, 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 you fire that back hip, and then you realize, uh-oh. So you try to hold up the hands and just slap at it and try to put it in play. Fouled back. We'll do it again at 0-2. 2-0, two outs. 0-2, oh, two. two on the pads on her doubleheader. Did I miss anything? Nope. I think okay. we're ready to go. Right. That ball in the dirt. I like what she did there. Again, the, the previous pitch, Hoover fouled it back into the screen. It wasn't straight back, but it was close enough. And a lot of times when a hitter is fouled and you straight back, it's because they got you timed up pretty good, so you change it up. And with the ball in the dirt, that'll advance Kira Mayer. Nice job by Mayer, our Mayer on the uh, secondary lead there. She saw the ball in the dirt. I'm sure she read the tra trajectory of the pitch and was already kind of shuffling that way. So a chance for Hoover. This ball popped up, knocks under it, and she got it. So the Cougars threaten, but the Knights get out of it. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth on the ISC Sports Network. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100-mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. 
This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. One, two, three, coming up for the Knights here on a beautiful Saturday on the campus of Mount or Marion University. Mount Vernon, my goodness. Ah, there was a dramatic I'm situation there, m and right? Now another pitcher, a third different pitcher up for Mount Vernon. They're warming everybody up. Strike on the outside to Hart. Oh. Lily went. This ball popped back. So went down 0-2. Popped out to the uh, center fielder last time. We both got a little confused there. I just thought they were a little closer. Different spot in the order there. I don't know what happened there, but we're back on track. And this ball lazily hit, and Hancock will run under it for the first out here in the bottom of the fourth. Well, this is our first game of the year, too, John, so... Unlike the uh, ladies here who played about 24 on one side, 22 on the other. This is our first one. Yeah, right now, the Knights at 22 and 4. This is their 27th game. We'll have 28 right after this one on the ISC Sports Network, playing a double dip today. Let's bring up Grace Meyer. Started things off for the Knights in the third inning with a base hit. Got things going. She scored the first run. You mentioned it earlier, she does bat 426, so. And this ball slapped the left and gets over the head of Roar. Meyer into second, standing, that ball gets away. And that's gonna roll into the dugout, and we'll see. Are they gonna give her home? They will, they should. They should. and there you go. So that's got, I'm going to say, this is what I'll say. I'll say double pass ball, able to score, because she was on her way to third. Well, it's good. The, the, the rule, I think, is you're going to see a really nice job of inside-out swing there. One hops the fence. Now the ball goes right back to Roar. She fires it in, and there's the air, in my opinion, right there. And then the ball goes into the dugout, and I believe the rule is one from the rubber, two from the field, meaning it, if it comes from the pitcher, then it's one base. Uh, like, again, uh, a batter hits it to the, the, the first baseman uh, or in shortstop, and they overthrow it. But from two from the field. So she had already a, a, a gotten to second when the, the ball went out of play, so she gets two bases. That's the way I understand the rule. But I went, you know, to Our Lady, we don't count so good, so who knows. Well, in any fashion, Grace Myers runs one and three for the Knights, and they hold a 3 nothing advantage here in the bottom of the fourth. It brings up Haley Green. She got the second run after the base hit by Meyer in that third inning. She walked and then scored on the base hit by Knox. This ball fouled to the right side. Well, again, we talked about it earlier in the game, and uh, Coach Fleming, the way he set this lineup up, he has basically a leadoff hitter in Lily Went batting sixth, and then Meyer batting seventh, and she's kind of that power hitter that can knock people in. There's a shot right off the glove of Mayer. She'll have to hurry, not gonna get her. That ball sails high, and that's another dugout, and let Green go to second. I believe, I believe that's all she gets. I think it's, again, one from the rubber, just play two from the field, and the two, I'm sorry, the two goes from where you were before the pitch. 
she was at home plate before the pitch, so she gets two, which is second base. That's the way I understand so it. So give Green the base hit. That was just a rocket shot off the glove. Yeah, it shouldn't even have been thrown. Again, we talked earlier about discretion needs to be the better part of valor at times. You're not going to get her. You're just not. And all you're going to do is throw it away, and that's what she did. Coach and Howell, Coach Howell yeah. making a trip to the mound. Now, she might be out there just to settle him down a little bit and say what I just said. Look, once you booted it, and that was a tough play. You didn't really boot it. Once it glances off your glove, you're done. Eat it. You, you, you try to make that unbelievable play, probably eight times out of ten, you throw it away. I mean, we're in this, right? I mean, so, so stop giving them runs. Stop giving them extra bags. Man, you're right, Jim. Coach Howell just out there to settle down her senior pitcher. Has been doing a fairly good job. Has only given up four hits, but a few walks here and there. They've been timely hits for the Knights. I used to like to go out there and try to settle them down, you know, with a little, little sarcastic comment. You know, they say that sarcasm is not an effective teaching tool. Just know that for me it was. And Jenna Minix gets a shot. Fouls that one straight back on the bunt attempt. Struck out her first at bat. Green at second. One out. Sullivan can still get out of this. This is the nine hole. Good pitch there. Yep, good spot. Minix down 0-2. Tell my pitchers all the time, Babe Ruth is dead and he never batted ninth. So go after the nine hole. Fouled back. Minnick stays alive. Let's try it again. Well, just inside. Really, really good spot. I'm sure Sullivan's a little upset that she didn't get the call there. That was very, very close. In my opinion, for a hitter too close to take. And will that find some grass? It does. Green will not be able to score, but Minix finds some hole. Drops it in. Just in front of Holcomb and runners on the corners here. One out for Harweger. Yeah, Green has to hold up on this thing, and again, I don't know that you need to make that throw either. You're, you're, there's just no way you're going to get her, and I think we are going to have a pitching change here, John. Which one? Stay or go? So we're going to have a pitching change. Coach Howell. Not a bad performance from Sullivan. Jim, she, she got, she went through the order the first time. and But I think, as you said, you know, the Knights, being the team that they are, was able to get through her the first time, saw what she had, and she started getting some trouble. So we'll make a change. Go to Ashton Roberts, a sophomore from Belleville, Ohio. Yeah, no shame at all uh, in, in Sullivan's performance there. I mean, uh, she wasn't necessarily helped by her defense. It wasn't horrendous, but, you know, there were a couple of errors there, a couple, couple of questionable throws. Stop throwing the ball around, <laughs> right? When you throw it like that, you're off balance, you're in a hurry. Again, 8 out of 10, you're going to throw it away. Stop it. The batter now for Marion, number 30, Savannah Harwiger. Well, you come in for a relief appearance to stay out of trouble, and you got to face a batter that came into this one batting an even 500. I'm Savannah sure things Harwiger. will be fine. So Roberts has some work to do. Runners on the corners, one down. So 
Mannix goes to second there on the pitch, and Coach Howell just says, you know what, we're going to give up the bag and we're just going to play. Corners in. It's like they're going to play normal depth in the uh, middle now, and they're going to walk them in a little bit. So now Harweger with a shot. Minix with good speed at second. Base hit will score them both. The ball high and up. So 2-0 to Harweger. And there's a shot straight up the middle. And it was hit so hard, a Harweger tried to stretch it into a double with her speed, but she got picked off. Good heads up on the cutoff throw by Mount Vernon. Yeah, that was really honestly a little questionable there. Uh, you don't want to give outs on the base path, especially you know you kind of run yourself out of a potential big inning. You're going to see a really nice pitch there, and again, balls hit well. Easily scores from uh, third, and then the runner at second. Coach Fleming's going to hold her up because the ball was fielded cleanly in center field. And Harbinger decides to go and gets thrown out for her efforts. Brings up Brooke Knox. RBI in the third inning. Gets scoring going for the Knights. That ball high. 4-0, bottom of the fourth, two down. And all four runs have been scored by the seven and the eight batter. When you get production on a seven, eight, and nine, you generally win. That ball up. Knocks now up, 3-0. No. This is a spot where I maybe would have given her a green light, but looking at Coach Fleming, again, he looks away, walks away. Kind of the universal si uh, signal for don't swing. That ball inside, so four pitches, four balls, and that puts Knox on board. So runners on the corner again for Abby Madeer. She had a chance in the third inning, had him packed, but struck out. Now she gets another shot, leads the team in RBI with 35. Knox took second there. Yep, no throw, no. Again, don't make a bad situation worse. Hope to get the hitter here. Uh, Badir with a shot. And gets through the hole. And that'll score both. Madeer will end up on second on the throw. And it's now 6 nothing. the Knights. Well, really nice job again of hitting and just leads the team in RBIs with 35, and this is why she's able to find holes there. You see the runner at second base had a great jump. No question that coach was going to send her, and he does, and then she takes second on the throw. So really good softball there. On the throw home, and here gets herself in the scoring position for a chance for Norman now. Strike over the outside. So to kind of further a point, John, again, when you get production on a 7, 8, and 9, you figure 1 through 5, they're going to do their thing. They're going to get, you know, their three or four runs. Ball foul to the right side. Norman down 0-2. But if you can set the table with 7, 8, and 9 and then have 1, 2, and 3 knock them in, that's, that's where you're making your hay, man. That ball high. Two runs in the third, four here in the fourth inning. A little waste pitch there. Gonna, some hitters will get themselves out if you let them. Ball in the dirt. Good stop by Hoover. A really nice, very fundamental job there of sliding out, getting on those knee pads, those knee protectors, and just kind of tilting your upper body at a 45. That way, if the ball bounces, hits you in the chest protector, it goes back in front of you, just stays right in front of you. Count even. And a shot and straight through the wickets of Hancock. That's going to score Madeer.
Well, really nice job of 0-2 hitting here. And again, just that ball was absolutely screaming. And of course, the runner on second base with two outs moving on contact. If she catches it in the air, who cares? Uh, and scores easily. So Norman with a P right over the, the glove of Hancock. She was really had no chance at that one. It scores Knox or Madeer, I'm sorry. And now it's seven nothing. So the night's really coming alive here in the fourth. Well, you know, again, it took them an inning or two to get on track, John, but you're not surprised the team comes in batting 377. Uh, again, hats off to Sheridan Sullivan for kind of holding them at bay as long as she did. But now you do kind of get the feeling that perhaps the floodgates have opened. Here's a fly ball. Roar under it, puts it away. But the Knights go to work on the offensive end. They get five. It's now 7-0. We'll go to the top of the fifth here on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Pepsi's always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. We head to the top of the fifth. And the Mary Knights went to work there in the bottom of the fourth, scoring five runs. And they have a 7-0 advantage here on a beautiful Saturday on March 30th for a doubleheader on the campus of Marion University and the ISC Sports Network. John Cooper alongside Jim Leisure and our fantastic ISC Sports Network crew. One pitch to Laney Sparks. Norman puts it away. Olivia Stunkel has to come out now with, you know, a little bit of a sigh of relief here. It was kind of close there. Now she's got a nice cushion. She just needs to go after people. This is where, honestly, you put people away. Hill, the batter, is 0 for 2. Ball a little high. Popped up to the left fielder and grounded out to the shortstop. Zary Hill, a sophomore from Lancaster, Ohio, played for the Golden Gales. And that ball finds a hole. Really That's nice. a nice piece of hitting yeah, right really there. it really is. And again, if we get a shot of the replay there, you know, she just kind of quickly chokes up real quick and then just slaps it. The old wee Willie Keeler. Talking about hitting them where they're not. My <laughs> goodness. Hit them where they ain't. Great piece of hitting by Hill. So Hill on with one down. And there's a bunt. Norman gets it, fires the first. Knox able to hold on. Really nice job. Watch how she sets her feet if we get a shot of it. First base was going to come in and field it. She sets her feet where all she has to do now is just do the arm. She, already, she didn't have to turn around. She turned around in her approach to the ball and was able to snag it. And now all she's got to do is put it up by her ear and throw it over. Now two down. Hill on second. Molly Pence. Pence a transfer, but she's very familiar with the area. Did There's a slap shot to left, and Hoffman able to backtrack, take a few steps, and put it away. Well, that's a nice play because I thought that ball was over her head. She did a really nice job. Drop step, get back to where you think it's going to come down and then start settling down. Nice job. The base hit by Hill does no damage. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth on the ISC Sports Network. 
This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue, worthy of 100 mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. 7-0 in favor of the Marion Knights here on the campus of Marion University. Playing host to the Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars on a beautiful Sunday, Saturday afternoon. That's a beautiful pooch right there. Australian Shepherd. Yes, Jim, I am familiar in the world of canines. I don't know. I just they're they're just old dogs and young dogs and lots of changes here. A new pitcher on the mound and a pinch hitter. Pinch hitter for the Knights, number 23, Brenna Fink, the sophomore from Indianapolis. Played her ball at Franklin Central for the Flashes. Fouls that one to the left side. She's not wasting any time, right? You know, you get an opportunity to play. <laughs> Put it in play, man. She didn't get cheated there. And on the mound for the Cougars is number 10, Bailey Sheets from Sycamore, Ohio. Slow roller. Sparks to Pence and one down. You mentioned Franklin Central there, the uh, alma mater there. That's my wife's alma mater as well. And that'll bring up Grace Meyer. Fouls it off to the left side. Sadly, my wife could neither hit, field, or throw. So she never got to play for the Marion Knights. And there's a shot. Is that going to find a gap? It does. Meyer on her way to second. She'll get there, standing up. So Grace Meyer having herself a great afternoon. Well, again, you know, three for three, two doubles and a single, but no surprise, right? I mean, she, she bats 426. Looks like we may have a pinch runner here. Emily Phillips heads out to second base to pinch run. The Crown Point Bulldog in her freshman season. I don't know anybody from Crown Point, so I can't make any references there. You have failed me, Mr. Leisure. <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody. You famous. had something for everybody, and yeah, then we get to yeah, Crown Point yeah, I'm done. and nothing. All I know is that John Dillinger escaped from the Crown Point. Okay, see, there. there we go. It, there's something. Yeah. Here's Haley Green. She's had a good afternoon herself. You know, and by making the stub there at second base, you do a couple things. I mean, number one, uh, you know, you get Meyer uh, off the fielder, and she can go relax. You probably can pick up a little bit of speed, and you get a young youngster in the ball game, somebody that maybe hasn't played a lot, and give them an opportunity to play. Count two zero. That ball caught the corner. Good two zero take though. Again, if. if that can't be your favorite pitch. If, you know, it was kind of tailing away. Look for something you can drive. And slow roller. Oh, off the glove of Hancock. She misplayed it. Phillips was able to get the third on the error. So now runners at the corners. And now Jenna Minix with a chance to end this thing. And 
reasons saying is that after eight, if you get eight runs in the fifth inning, it ends the ball game if you're up eight. So Minix with a chance. The Knights leading seven nothing. Runners on the corner, one out. Minix a respectful 289 coming into the ball game. That ball found the outside corner. She has struck out and has a signal. So freeze on a line drive. You don't want to run into a double play here. Make it go through. Just off it, the inside of the plate. If it goes through, you can basically crawl home. So Phillips 60 feet away from the Knights taking game one of this doubleheader. That ball outside. Good spot, though. I like the pitch. Cougars not concerned about green at first. And Minix just fouls that pass to right side. Yeah, tough pitch to hit. Ball was moving in toward her hands, but she tried to inside out it and get it right uh, past the uh, bag there, but just a little bit foul. Knights trying to move to... 23 and 4 and 11 and 2 in the conference. Mount Vernon look to extend it for a chance in the sixth. That ball up the middle, and that'll do it. Phillips scores. 8 0. Ball game, Marion. So the Knights defeat the Cougars 8 0. Marion moves to 23 and 4 on the season. Mount Vernon falls to 11 and 12. On behalf of my broadcast partner, Jim Leisure, and our entire fantastic ISC Sports Network crew, I'm John Cupo, and we thank you for joining us this afternoon for the Crossroads League matchup, our final from Marion. The Knights 8 and the Cougars 0. We've got another one coming up. Stay with us, and we'll see you in a little bit. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, 